All right, guys. Um, I'm going to go over uh, inverted offenses today. I'm going to figure out this mic. I really don't need a mic. Um, so how many, guys, uh, how many guys run an invert on their offense? A couple guys in here. OK, I'm going to go over a couple things. Um, So uh, let's just go over what an invert is. First off, inverts when short sticks gets covered, starts covering the ball behind, right? Um, you know, you have two short stick D mids on the field. They get stuck behind the cage, all right? It's often the time as a defensive coach that you're starting to get a little nervous, flipping out a little bit, all right? Because it's a very good time to attack, okay? And the reason why is when you attack from behind the cage, right, it's really just one pass and you're going to get a pretty good shot. All right, whereas opposed when you attack from the top, most of the time if you throw it behind, they can't shoot from behind the cage. So that's something, you know, we always look at a lot, you know, attacks from behind, coaching that, defending that is really tough. A um, couple things. So we got to develop a plan about they get the ball behind the cage, we got our short stick on there. Usually as a coach, we're flipping out, we're going crazy, you know, all right, we got to slide, 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 all this type of stuff, all right? So really you got to think about what works for your team, okay? Um, you know, do you have guys who are smart, right? Do you have guys who can figure it out? Do you, do you change anything, okay? Do you stay, and we'll talk about the three, couple, three options we'll go over today, but do you stay man-to-man, -man, right? Do you go into a zone? Do you, you know, do you have all these things? Do you get ready to slide early, all right? I'm going to go over something we call a flush, where you flush somebody out right away. Um, you know, and then the, the next thing is keep it simple, all right? I think there's so much out there, you know, and I'll go over a couple things that might even look a little too much for you guys today, but there's so much you can do, all right, defensively. You could slide from different spots. You could combo slide, slide from one spot, second slide from somewhere else. But keep it simple. The one thing I learned over the four years here, you know, at being varsity, is the less we do, the better we do, all right? The simpler it is, it's the same thing what Coach Ford says. The easier we make things on our guys, the less we have to think. Um, and then, uh, you know, everything's got to fit, okay? So if you're going to run, you know, if you're going to slide from the crease, you know, most of the time, you know, and then all of a sudden when they go into an invert, you're going to slide adjacent, all right, and it doesn't fit in your defense, it's not going to work. The guys aren't going to be able to react and change things, all right? So make sure whatever you do, you're constructing a defense, make sure everything fits together. Really important. <clears throat> all right, so um, ways to prevent getting into the invert. Let's just go over a couple of those first. I think that's one of the best things is, uh, you know, if you're really worried about inverts and you go into a game and you're worried about getting that that bad situation behind, a lot of times guys carry into the invert. So, you know, you'll have a guy right here on the mid, right, and he'll just carry it right down, okay? You have your D guy here. Most of the time, you could just, you know, kind of bring three to two, bring this guy over for a second, right, as he's going down, get that quick slide, all right? We actually call it laser, all right? We have a name for it, but we just get a real quick slide, right, and this guy just pops right back in. Sometimes these knuckleheads, they kind of go right past each other. And it's just an easy switch. All right, and that's really the first way. Not getting in the invert is one of the best ways to defend it. Um, another thing as well, if they start out, you know, if they have this mini behind the cage, right, and you have your short stick here behind, as that ball's moving around and going to them, just shutting them off, right, if you're really worried about it a lot. All right, so uh, different ways to cover the invert. All right, obviously we could stay man to man. Okay, and I'll go over that, and I think that's, that's what's going to hit some of you guys, especially at the lower levels. Going to hit you guys some of our rotations, some of our technique, um, the way we slide when the ball's behind. Okay, um, our flush zone, which is basically a zone where you're zoning behind the ball, right? And then after one pass, you're, you're breaking back into your man-to-man. -man. And then I'm going to go over a little bit over, over our zone. All right, this would be our inverted zone, we would call it. All right, just so because that's another option that you can do. <clears throat> all right, so uh, a couple different ways to cover, right, man-to-man. -man. <clears throat> all right, so ask yourself the question first, you know, what happens if we don't slide, okay? And going back to defensive coaches and kind of getting a little crazy, and you know, I'm much like this, right? You get behind, you know they got a good time, okay? You can kind of see it happening, all right? And you think that we got to go, we got to go, we got to go, we got to slide. And then 
you know, you think about it a little bit more, and if, if you have the ability to watch tape or scout another team, you know, this guy, most of the time about going behind the cage, is a midfielder that's never really practiced the skills of getting up to the island and making a move. All right, so a lot of times he'll come in here and he'll come around the cage and he'll get into what we call, you know, little Bermuda Triangles down here where, you know, he's, he's taking shots in these areas right here, right? So he'll get in here and he'll kind of get stuck just above. And really, giving up that shot is not a bad thing at all, okay? If we could squeeze guys down, all right, we, you know, if we could squeeze guys down and give up these shots, right, with our goalies, even if we give up one, right, the other five times it doesn't happen, most of the time that's a, a shot saved. Okay, and we're getting that ball back right away. So really think about it. What if we don't slide? Is this guy really a threat that we got to start going crazy and get behind the cage right away, right? Get a, get a long stick back there. A <clears throat> um, couple on ball defensive stuff, okay? So that when, now we start covering the guy. Coach Casey, I'm going to make him get up here. All right, I'm going to get interactive and make him do a little bit. He always says how he just sits there and plays on his phone while we're, we're talking, so. Um, so now we're playing the guy behind the cage, all right? And this is some simple, basic stuff. I'm a short stick, all right? I have to decide, what's my concept here? Am I going to try to turn the guy at GLE? All right, how many guys do that? How many guys turn guys at GLE? All right, all right there's a couple different ways to do it. If, you wanna, if you're going to be quick enough, you have a real good quick D mid, all right, and you think you can turn that guy, that's great. All right, and we do that sometimes as well. Um, one thing that we do that's a little bit different all right, is we play everyone to their weak hand, all right? We call it limp, okay? So let's just say that Coach Casey, let's say he's a lefty, all right? If he's a lefty, I come up with an approach, right? I want to match up my feet. We always want to slide, we always one man over, okay? So we always want to take away the space that they're going to dodge to, all right? We don't want him dodging to his left hand. I want him going right. I'm one man over, okay? He's got to go this way, all right? I'm good. I'm broken down, toe, heel. And now he starts going up, up the field, right? And here's the cage right over here, right? Instead of... Right away, now he's his weak hand. Instead of jumping in front and turning him and letting him get back to his strong hand, okay, we actually play, we'll play his back shoulder. So we'll put our hand right here, right, punch fist hole, all right, and we'll put our other hand right underneath his armpit here, okay, if you guys want to turn and see this. So I got one hand here, the other hand here, okay, and now when we drive this guy, I'm just going to drive him up the field, okay, drive him up. Sometimes we call it drive him wide, right, drive him up, drive him wide, because we know he's going to be hesitant. All right, he's not going to want to go, he's not going to want to go, and he's looking for that rollback shot. Okay, and a lot of times you guys know, even at our level, guys don't have two hands. Okay, they go weak handed, they just want to feed, 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 and then sometimes they'll bury it into the ground. So just having that and driving the guy up and driving him wide, you know, is a really good option, as opposed to always telling the guy, you got to turn him, you got to turn him, you got to turn him. Because let's be honest, with a short stick, that's, that's hard, that's challenging. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, you know, and then from there, you gotta, you got to have your plan on how you're going to slide, okay, if you're going to slide, right? We talked about sometimes you don't need to. But if you're going to slide, right, one obvious one and the one I'll take you guys through, and the way we do it at Michigan is we slide from the crease, all right? But the, the other two, before I show that one in a schematic, the other two, you can slide coma, right? And how many guys know what that is, right? You're just going to turn the guy, okay, turn the guy, turn the guy here, turn him back. Okay, and then we're coming from this back side over. All right, we're just coming on a cross crease slide. Okay, and then the last one here is you just go from the adjacent and kind of spin the wheel. So they, we drive them, say we drove them up the field, right? We come down from this adjacent, all right? And then, depending on what your, your slide package is, you can go on another adjacent or you could combo it and go from the crease. Okay, but uh, you know, those are two other options. I'm going to show you the crease again. You know, to be honest, at Michigan, we go everything from the crease, all right? We used to run some coma, all right? But then there'd be times, well, what if there isn't a guy behind who goes? You know, what if there's only one guy behind the cage and we can't go on a coma slide? Who's going, coach? So it kind of, just going from the crease keeps things simple. Um, and then behind the cage, I'm going to take you guys through this three-man slide rotation a little bit. So just to kind of keep things simple here. So we got our guy behind the cage. Okay, again, he's a lefty, right? He's, we're going to force him that way. We're going to slide from, from this guy right here. Okay? And then the one thing that we do different is I don't like using the top guys to fill. All right? The, what I, my theory is if, we, if you use the top guys, uh, we like them to come down and show, okay, which is more of a fake slide where you're coming down and kind of, you know, 
cramming the space a little bit, all right? But we don't want them to fill from the top, all right? Because that one pass up, that's a shot down, okay? If we fill from the bottom here with the guy who's going behind, all right, it's, he's really tough to find, okay? And we keep those guys up top so they have no one up top to throw to for a shot. So you kind of see it here, right? Here's our slide. We'll fill from that bottom spot. Now, really, there's a lot of technique in here, and I can go over this one little thing for a long time, but the important thing is when this guy slides, right, he wants his stick coming out at like this angle. Up. So he's going to actually come out, you know, whether it's cross-handed or, or to his forehand, he's going to come out with a stick at that angle. We work on what we call a slap lift, right, where we throw that slap down and lift up on his hands and kind of chicken wing him, right, because we don't want him to get through that stick. We want him, if anything, to try to get wide off that slide. We never want a guy, we never want to get our slide beat. All right, we never want to have to slide twice, put it that way. Okay, yes? Yeah, well, we're, we're consistent. We're consistent because we, we always force them to their weak hand. So this way, you know, if I'm sliding to him to his weak hand, my stick's here, you know, now we're bringing him that way and we're going. Sometimes if he's going, you know, strong hand, right, and we know we're getting top side on him now, right, we'll come more underneath. Okay, so this one we're coming down, right, we're coming down into him, here's the fill, okay, and then he kind of goes wide, right, we recover inside, okay, and then that guy from the crease bumps back out, all right, and how many guys know what a bump recovery is? Okay, a couple, right, a bump recovery, or what we call a bump recovery, is, you know, every time you recover, you are playing the ball, you're going to leave the ball, re recover to the crease, and then the guy in the crease is going to bump out to the back side. All right, we have a rule at Michigan, we never want to pass a guy on our team on a recovery. Right? So if there's a guy on the crease here, and I'm recovering, I don't want to run all the way through and get to the back side, because now that slide's that much longer. I could just take three steps, this guy could take three steps, and we're back even. All right? Yes? Yeah, sure. Okay, so he's closing now. Why doesn't that man cut to the crease the width of the back down low? This guy right here? Yeah, well, the thing that you have to realize, we, if we slide at the right time, okay, that guy who's, who's dodging can't get above the crease to find that guy on the back pipe. And also, if we do have, you know, remember, we got three other guys in here, right? We'll have an extra guy over here that'll help on the crash a little bit, okay? He could help down a little bit. But to be honest, a lot of teams, you know, you'll see, they'll be moving that ball around. They'll push that guy behind. He really isn't, you know, that open. Okay, and sometimes there he is, but it's, it's a tough feed to make, especially if we're sliding right, we're sliding with our stick out. And remember, he's, he's to his weak hand trying to make that feed. Little slough in, yeah, we call it show, right? Show heavy from the top. You know, if, if the guy really gets blown by sometimes or if he carries up high, maybe we'll, we'll come down on a hedge from the top. But otherwise, we're, you know, we're sloughing in, but we don't want to be all the way down because those passes up top to those 10-yard step-downs, they kill us. <clears throat> I'll take you through a couple here. So here, here we do this three-man drill here, and we do a, a really good drill for this. You do ones, twos, threes. So you go one-on-one -on -one behind, right? And then, you go, and then those guys stay in. You do two-on-two, -two, you work on your pick plays, right? And then you end up on this three-on-three. -three. And then three-on-three, -three, we make it so they can't set a pick on the ball. This way our defense can rotate can work on this rotation. So I'm going to show you a couple here. All right, there's the slide, recovery to the crease, and he bounces back out. All right, then he's matching up on the guy again. All right, this one, they kind of jam it in, right, where they're on the crease for the, the finish. Here's another one here. It's a real good one here. Slide back out. All right, let me see it one more time. Through it. <clears throat> right, again, he recovers crease, bump back out. Second one. All right, Phil, and then third one here, this is a real good rotation. There's a slide, we're covering up the crease, and then we get back behind the cage. Any questions on that? All right, uh, next thing I'm going to take you through is our flush zone, okay? Um, our flush zone, okay, basically it's a five-man zone, right, behind the short stick. The short stick's behind the ball, on the ball behind the cage. We pretty much make a... We make a box, okay, some people make a diamond, I'll show you the shape in a second here, all right, and then the difference with this zone as opposed to just dropping into a zone, which we'll talk about in a second, 
is this zone after a pass, we're going to rotate, we're going to slide and rotate, and after that, we just bounce right into our man to man. So we use this a lot because it gets the teams out of that invert. <clears throat> um, you know, so a couple things with the flush zone. The one thing to get into the flush, so remember, we want to be able to get in our shape above, okay? If you're behind the cage, if you could deny, so that guy behind the cage catches a little bit deeper, like he catches towards the back line, right? Or if you could slough off sometimes, right? And have, as he's carrying behind, so it takes them more time, so you have more time to set up your flush, okay? So you have to go from man to man, now you're gonna be bouncing in that zone, you gotta communicate, okay? And then, you know, the defense has to be on the same page, all right? So it's a little more advanced. A um, couple things here, communication, make sure you need, you need a leader on the team. Who's going to call this out? It's a goalie. Goalie's great to do it, okay, but make sure he can see everything, right? We use a defenseman at Michigan, okay, relay the call. Anything you do on defense, you should always relay the call, all right? Which means you actually say guys' names, all right? And one thing I learned communication-wise, we had, uh, you know, Navy SEALs in here, right? We use name, command, volume, okay? You say the guy's name, right? Johnny, over here. Right? It's, it's simple words, okay? Johnny and the action and the volume, volume you say it, all right? And we actually practice that, okay? I've, I've been doing a lot of camps, and I tell these little kids all the time, guys, communication, coaches are going to yell at you to, to, to talk all the time, and kids don't want to talk anymore, right? And that isn't it. It's a skill. It's a skill for our guys at Michigan to communicate on the field, all right? It takes them knowing, knowing what they have to say, right? Not being too tired to say it, okay, and be able to communicate that. Um, and then the last thing, and something we use a lot as well, use hands, okay? Use hands. When you slide recover, getting into spots, right, point to each other, all right? You see, there's a great one right there, okay? They're just pointing on where that guy has to go. All right, so there's our setup, um, and this changes, you know, we, uh, in the past, we, we were in a, in a diamond above the ball. Sometimes we had a, a guy behind. This was the kind of new one we went to at the end of last year, all right? And the reason we went to this, it was easier for our guys to rotate um, once the ball started dodging. Uh, to be honest, the clips that I have here, they kind of attacked, I'm gonna show you some clips from Fairfield, and they kind of attacked us at a little bit of a weird angle, okay? So I don't know if they're really the best, but hopefully you guys get the idea. Um, just to take you through kind of a schematic of it, right? You have the short stick behind the ball, he's dodging, okay, D1. Right, he's gonna slide, okay? And usually we wanna slide a little bit early in this, right? Generally like right at the hot spot, right? Right at the point of the crease there. <clears throat> and now we're, now we're spinning the wheel, okay? If he passes up, that's great. If he passes up, this guy's going over. If they make another pass, here comes this guy. If they throw to this guy, he comes out there. Our recovery always comes back into the crease, right? And then our crease guy will bump out. And here, most likely the bump out will be to the guy who floated back behind the cage. This is actually Coach Ford's uh, invert offense, if you guys want to take it down. But, um, you know, it looks simple, okay? Getting into that shape, really important, okay? And making sure that we have those slides, all right? And rotating, okay? We call red to rotate, all right? That's a call anytime we move positions, we call red. A little more terminology for you. So I'll take you through a couple here. <clears throat> There's five from this game. This was the uh, ECAC playoff game last year. Right now you can see they're kind of setting up. Right there we are, we're in our shape. All right, they go, we kind of push away, push away, and then they re-dodge us on the back side. We throw a bad check. Makes sense, maybe not the best uh, examples here, but you kind of can get the idea how we get into it. Always bury the, the short stick inside, right? We want him to scrape to ball side, I think that's important. He's a little late on that one. All right, the reason we want the short stick on the inside, we want to use those poles on the outside to rotate, okay, because it's harder to dodge poles, obviously. All right, again, here they, they get lined up. All right, again, they attacked us a little more from the wing. All right, got a block there. Then we got uh, about two more here, a couple better ones, I think, later on here. All right, you see the communication going on. See the guys pointing right now? They're in on the crease. All right, we were lost a little bit for a second. All right, then he comes out. <clears throat> All right, get the takeaway. And then here's the last one here. Number two actually makes a mistake here. He kind of goes back to play the ball, which he shouldn't have. But And we won the back line. 
So any any questions about that at all? With the whole attacking from the side thing, the box of one, you still like the box of one? I do. I do. I wish, you know, to be honest, I don't think we were as prepared for them to go from the side, right? But from the side, the one thing that changes is instead of, you know, rotating into it, you're kind of, the one guy's pushing away, right? So they, they were attacking from right here, okay? We're playing the ball, right? And they didn't have, they didn't have anybody, sorry, they didn't have anybody here. They didn't have anybody over here. So when he went, this guy needed to go, right? He needs to push away. He would actually come to, and he kind of floats on the back side. He would push there. They throw one more. He goes there. Our recovery just goes right into the crease, okay? Bounces the guy back behind. All right, so a little bit different, you know, and obviously you always have it drawn up perfectly. All right, if they dodge here, we're good. All right, and that's why you need to rep it versus different things. All right, and last thing, just the zone. Okay, I won't go too heavily into zone because I think you can spend a whole time on here. But, uh, a couple things with the zone, all right, this is the best to do versus a double invert, all right, and everything I've been showing you has been single inverse, double inverse basically is if you have both short sticks back behind the cage, okay, that's a really tough thing to cover, double invert, all right, there's two guys that are uncomfortable right now, so, you know, you usually, some teams shut off with one guy, and then they kind of play five man, right, and kind of get in that box above the cage, all right, for us, we kind of mix it up a little bit, but getting into a zone is a really good way to uh, get them out of it, right? It'll take them out of their, their invert offense, okay? Because now they're going to in, get into their zone offense a little bit. <clears throat> um, you know, switch back to man af after a shot. The one thing that's different about this zone and a flush zone, right? Af in the flush zone, after one pass, okay, we're sliding. We're basically going back out to our men. We're spoking back out to our men. In this, we'll stay in the zone the whole, for usually to a shot, or if we like it, we'll say it for the whole possession. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me a lot about zones. Obviously, I, I played, when I played, played for Jack Haley at New York Tech, they had the backer zone, okay, and we've run many zones. The more I'm learning about them and, at our level, okay, it's a really good changeup, okay? It's a really, really good changeup. It should be in. I don't know if it's good to have all the time, okay, because if teams do have the time to put offenses in, I think you're kind of playing defensive. And I'm going to show you a clip here at Denver. Now, granted, Denver... This year, we played them 4-2 to halftime. This was our second year of varsity, the clip I'm going to show you. But, um, you know, they, they scored a 50% rate. They've been the best offense the last three years. They just got the number one ranking in college lacrosse. So we really had to go into this, you know, and you'll see we're very passive. We're pretty, pretty tight and pretty locked in. Um, just a couple things with the zone if you want to take down. I won't go through all these, but a couple good ones, right? Keep your shape. All right, I think that's great. Um, you know, obviously everything changes. Your stick's got to be up, right? Stick's on ball. The one thing is we, you got to pass the Dodgers, okay? You want to, we talk heavily, almost everything has to go back to keeping your shape, but any zone offense is to squeeze two guys together, right? And then throw back, all right, to that open occupied spot, right, that you just left from. So it, if you could scrape, if you could go from, you know, you're covering one guy, and then as this guy comes to cover him, you could scrape off and go back to your spot. All right, you're going to be a pretty good zone team. Um, you know, a couple other things, just whether you're going to pass or whether you're going to play behind the cage, things like that. I'll show you a real good example here. This is the setup. All right, so this is the one for the inverted zone. There's times where we'll put D1 and D3 behind and the two short sticks up top. All right, but, you know, just a nice way to kind of break into it. Remember, they're invert right now. We have that other short stick behind, we got that short stick behind, boom, drop back into the zone. In this zone, we're really tight, okay? There's some zones where it's, you know, out all over the place. This one, we're going to be really tight. So here's a couple clips. <clears throat> all right, you can see we, this is actually just one possession. We get into it versus Denver. All right, and you can see kind of early on here, they're getting into their offense. You know, if you're the lesser team, especially at times, it's really good to break in that you could buy some time. Okay, if you're up in a game, Okay, this is a really good zone if you're up in a game, right? Because you're going to be tight, and especially if you have a good goalie. You can see they can start to attack us. So you start seeing our guys start losing their shape, okay? They pinch two guys together. We don't know whether we're coming up. We're hedging. We get pulled off the pipe behind the cage. Okay, the rule is in this zone, if you get pulled off the pipe, that other short stick will follow, all right? He'll follow and go to the other side of the pipe. See, we just kind of keep rotating. They keep, they got us moving now. 
okay, and then we get out, right, and we get a great save, all right, we have an awesome goalie, all right, that's one thing that's constant about our team. <clears throat> all right, so that's pretty much it, um, you know, a couple different ways, uh, any questions out there? Yeah. In the inverted one? Yeah, in the inverted one, we don't spend the guys behind as much, all right, just because it's... Single or double inverted, or both? With ours, with the zone, you're saying? Well, if, you, if they only have one back of that, yep. do you send somebody behind, or do you leave them all up? We usually leave them all up top, even if they have one behind. Yeah, you could, sp you could play behind the cage uh, a couple different ways. You could either just kind of zone the pipes, right, or you could put one guy behind on the ball, and have the other guy right here and kind of just spin with each other. So as one goes, the other one kind of goes and you keep that balance and shape. Anything else? Sure. Yeah, we... Yeah, so... Mostly you're talking about approaches when we're going out to the ball. So when we approach out to the ball, we have a couple, we have a couple rules, right? One is, the first thing is pick a side, okay? We go out, most of the time you want to pick top side at, at a youth level, okay? Top side, when, when I line up with a guy, right, so if, if someone was out here, I want to line up my left foot with their left foot, okay? So this way, that means I'm one man over, okay? My, my footwork, okay, obviously I want to be about shoulder width, all right? We want to be toe heel. I think that's really important. I see a lot of guys who get, you know, square, and they go back on their heels, all right? Being toe heel, being comfortable, and then I use the term sit in your chair, all right? Sit down in your chair because we want them down, all right, and then head up, okay? Really important that their head's up. Um, a really good drill, okay? Um, you know, we'll, we'll start using this more for approaches, and just, it kind of teaches you playing the ball. You just kind of, just a three-cone drill. Put one cone here, one cone there, all right? And now you have... Uh, you got two D inside, so you got one D in here as kind of the inside, one D guy here. Then you could have two coaches or you could have some offensive players. And they're just going to throw it across, right? When they throw it across, this guy's going to come out and approach. Now, you could want them to approach right side or left side. And this draw, I suggest starting to approach this way, right? So you're approaching top side. And this guy works on opening his hips because he just went from being on the ball this way, opening up to the ball, which is also a very big key, and then getting it onto this cone, right? And now he just moves it back. This guy opens his hips, gets in. This guy comes out with that proper approach. And just throwing these passes back and forth, right? We, and very simple drill, you know, and it's pretty quick, okay? But a great, good footwork drill to start off. That answer it? Okay, great. Anything else? Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it.